All right, everybody. It's December 6th and it is cold. It's gotta be in the 20s. It's really windy, so the wind is uh, brutal. But uh, I thought I'd make a quick video of um, loading our uh, S205. <clears throat> it's gotta go in. I'll talk a little more about about that when I hop in there. But um, this I just briefly touch on. I'm sure a lot of you guys have experience loading things. I don't have a ton of experience, but um, for those of you that have never done it or just looking for a quick how-to, um, these uh, these jacks here. They are super handy. Um, what it does is firm up the back of the trailer, um, and it makes it so you, when you crawl up on the trailer, that it doesn't tip the trailer back and doesn't pick your pickup up in the air. So it just holds the trailer in place. Um, these ramps aren't the fold-up ones; they stow away on the side here. So throw them out. Um, got these jacks down. Um, the other thing that I don't know if most people do or not, I set my parking brake because. Um, that way it's less stress on the transmission. Cause even just unloading big square bales off here, and if you don't set the parking brake, you can see the whole thing shaking. So in my opinion, you set the parking brake, it just uh, helps your transmission not take all the force, especially with a, I think the thing weighs like 60, 800 pounds crawling up on it. So it'll push forward. So I set the parking brake, things in park, um, and we'll crawl up on here. Um, it's nice to be able to have a bucket to, uh, help curl it over as you go up on the thing to, so that the skid loader doesn't want to tip back but it's going into the shop and I don't think they want a bucket in the shop especially a dirty one so I'm gonna just load it slowly without a bucket so we'll see how that goes and you guys can ride with um, so what it's doing is um, it's got something going on with the joystick on the right side here they're all electronic um, We'll see if it'll do it now. Let's see here. See, now it just unlocks today and it's not acting up, which, go figure, it acts up all year. And then the day we decide to bring it into the dealership, it decides to stop acting up. So, we'll probably still just have them look at it and plug their computer into it because it's been throwing a code. And the code's been saying that the right joystick is not neutral. And I messed with it all my days off. It could be different sensors and this and that and fuses. So I checked a bunch of things. And the problem with the new stuff is that um, it is so um, difficult. I don't know how I want to say this. It's so difficult to diagnose what's going on if you don't have the computer and the software. So I called in with the error code and he listed off about a few things that he thinks it could be. I looked it up on some forums and online and whatnot, and watched a couple YouTube videos, and um, it can either be the joystick itself, or there's a solenoid under the cab, and there's also a, um, uh, what do they call it, actuator. It's more than likely an actuator, possibly, or I'm hoping it just needs to be recalibrated, possibly. Um, but, uh, Let's see, I should be able just to hold on to you guys. Let's put this up a little ways so they don't get in the way. See if I set these right. So you wanna make sure you hit them square. I just threw them out, I just guessed. So I gotta make sure I hit them square. So, and I would avoid turning once you're on them just cause they're metal and they're jagged. I'll flip this back down. They're jagged. So they don't, uh, let's get, let's get the loader open. doesn't want to do it. Let's see how am I going to do this. Well, let's go like this. Sorry for a second. Hang on. I already put the buckets back away and the buckets are super dirty, but we'll do this. Like I said, I never uh, loaded it without the bucket. So that was an experiment. So I'll just rob the pallet forks and I'll just have to uh, set the pallet, or you know, I'll have to uh, just strap them down, put them unloaded at the dealership, put the pallet forks back on, just strap them down. Um, it's all right, no big deal. Won't know unless you try. 
they kind of figured it was going to do it just with the weight distribution. I don't know if it's 60 40 or what these are. Um, so here we are back at it. I'll leave you guys. Hopefully, you can see just because I got to do both hands. So, what I do is I crawl up on here and then I start curling it forward so that the weight's hanging out over the trailer. And then as I come up on the trailer, I just pick it up so it doesn't gouge into the to the thing, to the deck. So you want to make sure you're as centered as possible for trailer tire wear. Here, get this back out of the way and I can grab you guys. I don't know what you're looking at. Um, center yourself. And then uh, you can see here, I'm just at the start of the tandem axles here. Um, this is, uh, what is it? capable of hauling, um, I think they're 5,500 pound axles, 5,200. Either way, the skid loader weighs 7,000 pounds. But uh, the other big thing that I don't think most guys take into consideration is tongue weight. <clears throat> um, you kind of watch the truck as you crawl forward here. And you, you gotta have the front tires in front of the, in front of the, uh, it's been a long, it's actually been over a year since I've, we don't haul the skid loader very often. So it's been over, I think over a year. So I'll check here what I, I have a, uh, it's called a way safe hitch. And uh, what it does is measure tongue weight. It's just so it's not too windy so you guys can hear. They say you want to be between uh, like 10 and 15%, nine and 15% of your total weight on your tongue weight. So, but you don't want to exceed your tongue weight maximum. And on this trailer, it is a maximum of like 18 or 1900 pounds. So the skid loader weighs um, 6,700. And I'm sure the trailer weighs all of 1,000, 1,500. So really we should have around 750 probably, you know, at least 750 pounds of tongue weight. So it's down here on the hitch itself. Right now we're at about um, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seventy-nine. We're actually spot on. We're probably right at eight hundred pounds. So this is called a way safe hitch, and I love it. It's adjustable because I had a lift hitch, a lift kit. Um, yeah, it's great. Um, it helps uh, safely load it. If you have too much tongue weight, then your steering gets all goofy because your truck truck's sitting like this, and if you don't, if you got the skid loader too far back. Um, then it can get really goofy because then you got your back tires up in the air and that's when you get your fishtailing going down the road. So what I forgot to do and I'll do right now is let these off to see if there's any weight being held up by these. And then I'll check the scale one more time. So that's in the air. I should have done that right away. So we'll recheck to make sure I have proper tongue weight and then uh, chain down. But I don't know, we've had the skid loader for three years, I think, and it's never been to the dealership. We've done all the servicing ourselves, So it's good to at least have them look it over once anyway. So yeah, there it went back down to 600. So I'll just crawl forward a little more and we'll call it good. The dealership is only four miles away. So I'll take it easy anyways. It's not like I'm going down the freeway or nothing. So see if it'll do it one more time. So. Up here is where it would flash like an exclamation point and it wouldn't unlock the arms. And it unlocks again, so. I don't know if the f stuff I messed with, with the um, fuses, the relays, the sensors, and all the stuff I touched, which I can't narrow down what it would possibly be because I did quite a few things. Um, I don't know what it was or maybe one of those things did it, but uh, I don't know. Now it won't throw the coats. So I don't know if it'll, they'll be able to know what's going on with it, but they'll be at least to be able to, uh, <clears throat> look it over and whatnot, but that's the issue with all the newer equipment. I mean, you're not able to repair it yourself. Um, you at least have to get them to diagnose it most of the time, unless, you know, their computers will be able to tell them. Because of course, yeah, I could have went at it and I could have put a new actuator or solenoid or, you know, and all of a sudden it's not those things. And then I have to get the joystick and I don't know how to do the electronic joysticks. And then you get the relays and then you're in it just big time. So you, you originally thought you were gonna save money doing it yourself and then you're just, way over budget than if you would have just brought it into the dealership to begin with. It sucks, but uh, sometimes that's just the way it is and you just gotta do it um, and let them um, 
do their thing. But yeah, this is a 2008 uh, Bobcat S205. It's got 577 hours on it with the joystick controls. Big fan of the joystick controls. You can switch them. I like running the cat style because we had a cat tracked one before this. So that's the way I run them. Um, I'm not going to set the parking brake because that has some issues, kind of, not really, but it's so cold that I don't want there to be issues tomorrow morning when I bring it in because they want it at 8 a.m. and I work the overnight shift, so I don't want to, uh, I didn't want to have to load this in the morning, so it'll be cold, but I'll plug the skid loader in so the engine itself is a little warm when I get there, but um, yeah, we got to make sure it's in tip-top shape because if this joystick, if it gets worse than what it was doing, from what I've read, that um, it can just kick out as you're driving. And I do all the neighbors. There's some elderly people that live out here that aren't capable of plowing themselves out and, uh, and or their widows. So I, uh, I help them out and plow them out at night. And sometimes I do it when I get home from work at like three, four in the morning and just plow everybody out. And uh, you can't, I, <laughs> with a 10 foot snow bucket going down the road, I cannot have these joysticks kick out and stop working and not make the machine move. Because then you're really screwed because you need somebody to the electronic stuff to get the skid loader moving again. So we're going to get it looked at. We're going to get it squared away. And I'll let you guys know what it was. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is make sure you properly secure it down. Um, put four points of contact and make sure they're, you know, this is obvious to some people, but to others it's not. Don't go straight out. Do them at an angle. Like go up to the, I'm gonna go probably go to this one and then under and then to the to the hook on the front and then back out and then you got chain binders and then same back here I'll probably go to this one up and then down so yeah just a quick video at least it's something to uh, show you guys loading the uh, loading the skid loader you know and then you know you got proper tongue weight and then your truck's not sitting goofy right the trailer's still sitting level, the truck's still sitting level. You know, some guys, they really crawl forward and the truck the trailer's sitting like this and the truck's like this and it's, you know, it's just too much of a liability. You have to make sure you properly haul your equipment. So, yeah, I hope it was informative to some and if not, it's an update to others and I'll, uh, I'll let you know what's going on with the, uh, with the Bobcat. We'll have them look it over and I'll let you guys know, so. Thanks for watching.